Yeah, if I can have your attention, please. Oh, yeah. It is now 5.30. Out the field it is time something. to start our board meeting. Board members, <laughs> it's time to get with the work. Okay? I'm saying something really important. Okay. <laughs> Weather. Weather. Okay. Yes, I welcome you to our board meeting for the month of June. At this time, I'd like to call on Mr. Terry Williams for the Pledge of Allegiance. If you stand with me, please, and face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Our mission statement will be given tonight by Ms. Ethel Booth. Beaufort County Schools will provide quality educational programs and services to ensure student academic and vocational success. Okay. Thank you. Lisa has said that we do not have anybody signed up for public comment, so we're going to move right on with the agenda. Item number two is the approval of the agenda that you have at your place. Is there any additions or anything? So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. Seeing no discussion, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. All right, next item is the approval of the minutes. I'll let you look those over if you want. Move approved. Second. Right. Got a motion and a second. Who for the discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay. All right, discussion action. CTE plan. Ms. Petaway. Good evening. Um, this is the annual report we do on the CTE program and also um, just a presentation of what we would like to do for next year. I'm going to very briefly, don't blink because I'm going to very briefly run through some things. You have this um, in your agenda that you can take your time and look at, but we're just, thank you, <clears throat> we're just going to run through a few things. Just uh, some highlights, not only for CTE, but for some of our STEM programs, as well as some other things that um, I work with <coughs> with both the county schools. You have a lot to be proud of in your teachers and your students, and you'll hear even more about some of the things that I'll just briefly highlight from Damon, as um, we didn't know we were presenting on the same night and didn't know what each other was putting in the PowerPoint. So um, just stay tuned and you'll see a few things. We've been working a lot on workforce, and in the end, we're all in this together, businesses, the whole community, as well as the school system. CTE's not just for a few, it's now for everybody. Um, some things that we do to promote career-ready graduates, we have over 4,000 students in CTE. We have career academies. Actually, you all received an award this year for the grad program, which is the um, workforce development and the, the career development plans and how they work through from 6th through 12th grade. Uh, some of the highlights that we've had, we've had over 1,800 credentials for the past two years. I'm hoping we'll have the same this year. We don't have all of our numbers in yet. We had 94 internships, which was doubling what we did. Um, from 1516 into 1617 and I just looked we have 139 that we had this year internships um, we have a point of pride is our health sciences uh, had a hundred percent passing rate for our nursing fundamental students last year this year one could not test that particular day but everybody else passed again this year we've been working with the advisory council that Dr. Phipps had spoken with y'all about on several occasions. We are the second community in North Carolina to get a Max Carolina grant, which um, we're working with Region Q Workforce Development Board and five of our companies have put in money. So we're working on our apprenticeship and pre-apprenticeship programs. Actually, I went and visited two businesses today. Um, and we've got one of our businesses in our community who wants some interns this summer, whether they get credit or not, but they want to pay our kids $9 an hour to come and work for them this summer. And we hadn't even got our pre-apprenticeship program up and running yet. We've had joint advisory meetings with Beaufort over the last couple of years. Our historical results for the career readiness certificates, um, we had 127 this year, which was up from last year. Our proficiency suffered a little bit, and we're going to continue to work on that, which you can see over the history. 
Um, <coughs> again, for our industry credentials, you can see our history with that. It has steadily risen, um, and our percent proficient has fairly steadily risen as well. Uh, point of pride, so Southside High School was the number two 1A school in the state last year for the number of um, Microsoft certifications they gave. We um, help host the Ag Expo each year. This is a picture from this year. There were 1,300 students from about 14 counties um, at this event this year. The Automotive Academy, we just sent off the ASE accreditation and hope to finish that in the fall. Our Firefighter Academy, um, we're continuing with that and we're starting to see some students utilize the policy that you set for students to be able to transfer schools to go to some of these because that's the area they'd like to go into. We um, work on coding, technology, engineering, and design beginning in middle school and um, we are trying to continue that pipeline through the high school. Our health sciences has paired with Beaufort Community College much more and um, going just looking at what they do and doing some labs over at Beaufort Community Colleges and seeing there's more than just doctors and nurses that work in the medical field. Our visual performing arts and industrial design, which Mr. Walcott is part of, um, we use those EWIF funds. This was the fourth year. We kind of had to track them down this year and didn't get them until February or March, but we got them. Um, and then actually Mr. Walcott is the teacher at Washington High School who's also certified in CTE as well as art now so he can credential our kids when they go through the Adobe video. Um, we also have a teacher in the middle school at PS Jones who's also um, CTE licensed as well. I'm not going to show you this. This is the entire commercial. He'll show you a clip of it when, <laughs> when he comes up. These are just some pictures. Um, from the coding and the Sphero training that Mr. Huggins has done. We've made a lot of strides this year um, with things such as this, and I'll talk a little more about that later, but I just put in a few of the pictures. Um, our CNC machines at Southside and at Washington High School are being utilized. Um, actually, on a project with Mr. Walcott and Mr. Adams, they did the food pantry for the First Christian Church, and they did some design and some crossover between the two curricula this year I was really proud of. This is a um, clean room that was constructed by Southside High School's carpentry class for uh, a local company. I'll start to say who it was, but I won't do that. Um, and they paid for the materials, but they couldn't get someone to come in and do it for them, so our guys did the clean room constructed in the in the lab there, they took it apart and they're reconstructing it actually this week or next week inside the company for a printing room. Um, some more CNC pictures. We talk about pathway. I'm not going to belabor this point. Just think about this as a way we're trying to get our students to think about where they're going to be in their career, starting as early as sixth grade and sometimes elementary. And we talk about how that is done. And we still have ways to go in that. There's a visual for you, kind of give you an idea of what it is, what we should do as educators. We have many, many partners, which we are strengthening those partnerships constantly. Um, we do some real life things with our kids. That's the, um, the money, I forget the exact name of it, but it's with the credit union. They come and do the real world money. We do cross uh, agency trainings, which you see in the bottom picture some of the roles and responsibilities that should be laid out for different people in the community. We do job shadow with the chamber each year focused on our 10th graders. This is actually a prototype <laughs> of Jimmy Buffett's boat that was built here in Beaufort County. And that's um, Martin Johnson, the economic director and Derone Dance, he's a former NC Works director. We got to tour that plant one day. We had some, again, cross agency trainings um, with many of our businesses represented. Uh, in two of our trainings this year because we were able to get an advanced manufacturing pathway grant. <clears throat> and just a, just some things that you can look over. I want to show you one thing and then I'll be done. Let's see. <laughs> this is a video that was made as part of the grant for advanced manufacturing this year. Nowadays, everything is going more Most of these students are both county school students. And, uh, this career path has definitely shown us the basics. 
I chose this career because I love to do hands-on things and electrical engineering is something that won't go away any, any time in the near future. There's not very many electricians right now, so the more that's going in the field, the more likely you'll have a better chance of getting a job. The education I'm gaining is crucial to learn how to operate the electrical components of the machinery. My father had mentioned it to me um, right after I graduated and talking about how I needed to pursue a trade because it was so beneficial economically and personally because you know you can build anything off of it. My grandma was actually dating this guy and he was a welder and he was telling me stuff about it and I was like, hmm. I was thinking about it and I did some research on it and um, well, you know, you get pretty good money. Um, one thing that I'm doing right now is stick and TIG. Um, I was supposed to take MIG, but I take that next semester. I'm actually doing MIG, TIG, and stick. There is actually a lot more technology coming up, like these things and the virtual reality um, welding stuff. And I can keep up. It's, it, it, it's interesting. I love technology. I was a stay-at-home dad for eight years, and I wanted to get back into the workforce and be able to provide for my family. That's why I, I came here. I'm currently working at uh, Sesame Technologies, which is doing stuff that I'm going to school for. This program gives me the ability to be able to design and create anything that I can think of, anything that I want to do. Before I came here, I never saw a lathe. I never seen a mill. I didn't know how they were run or anything. Um, but my instructor, he made it very simple for me to understand. He made it very easy for me to learn. I chose to go to college because I've seen the potential it has for economic growth and how it can help myself and others around me. I definitely think um, obtaining a college education will definitely open doors for me. Some companies hire guys right out of this class. Uh, it's cool because I'm using what I'm learning at school every day. Just remember you have a lot to be proud of in your community. Yeah. Thank you. I would love for more Thank high you. school students to see that video we just saw. I don't think they understand what's out there for them. That is one of the very things we are trying to get the word out about in various ways and that's one reason actually that video was made was to encourage. We have Many, many students, I can't tell you how many thousands of courses we had them actually are taking at CCP through Beaufort Community College and through um, CTE courses. But those industry credentials and getting those kids early is what it's all about. And actually, hopefully we can work with Damon. Um, we've talked about doing some additional videos kind of in-house. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, he'll talk a little bit more about that. But we're, we're integrating lots of different things and trying to move our kids forward and make our community a better place. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Petaway. Um, we need to vote on the CTE plan. Yes. Is that correct? <laughs> So I will entertain a motion at this time. Move approval. Okay. Second. All right, got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing mm -hmm. none. All in favor of this motion, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Good work, Wendy. Thank you. That Thank you. Awesome. Very good. All right, moving down to discussion, no action. Uh, Mr. Willie Mack, Cameron. <coughs> Cyber policy presentation. Yes, we have Mr. Zach Wright with uh, Surrey here tonight to talk about us. Uh, increasing our current policy with cybersecurity. We have a, a, a policy within our school board association policy. This expands us, gives us a little bit more coverage. He's going to tell you what his company is going to offer us. Uh, this is informational for you. Uh, we have discussed it with uh, our technology director. He does think that in the world that we live in, that the basics that we have, if we had an attack, be it during testing or something, that his staff wouldn't have the capacity to bring us up and running as quickly as we needed. And according to the conversations he had with Mr. Wright, this policy would give us that outside source and, and the financial coverage to do that. Okay. Mr. Wright. Folks, thank you for your time. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Talking about cyber coverage, maybe you need to talk a little bit about <coughs> crime insurance coverage. 
which you do have, specifically computer fraud, if an outside hacker, if you will, were to attack the system, break into the banking network, start moving your funds outside of your bank account into others, whether they move them to Greenville, North Carolina, or they move them to Moscow, Russia, you have that coverage in place already. We've got a few options for higher limits there. But when we talk about cyber, we're talking about really two things. Uh, the release of personally identifiable information, or we're talking about a breach of your network, whether they put a program in to deny a service or just some sort of encryption that denies you the ability to use your uh, server. Uh, we've done presentations at NC ASBO, which is the uh, finance officer's uh, annual meeting in February. And what we've always cautioned against is maybe using riders onto other policies, like attached to a general liability or a property policy, to try to do the job that a standalone policy can do that really those can't do. So, cyber, you probably heard many out there from Target to the city of Atlanta, bringing it closer to the county of Mecklenburg, uh, county of Davidson. Uh, Mecklenburg, County of Davidson, and Atlanta, those are all multi-million dollar claims. And a program that slipped in to where their entire, or a substantial amount of their computer networks were encrypted. Bringing it down to the school level, I think the first one that we ever saw substantial claim in North Carolina was the Davidson County Schools, which we were the agent broker on, and uh, the carrier that we're recommending uh, was the carrier in place as well. They've given us permission to talk about that claim, but in a nutshell, the, uh, a person in the finance department uh, responded to an email that was a fraudulent email, actually sent over 3,000 W-2s, 1099s to whom they thought was the superintendent. Turned out it was not. So the policy here that we had, uh, that we're proposing for you would address that. That claim is in the neighborhood of about $175,000 by the time they've notified everyone affected and they have done the credit monitoring. And we'll talk specifically about that in a moment. Uh, another school system in South Carolina that the current, um, I guess, claim amount is around 500,000. Network breach started feeding uh, names, dates of birth, so security numbers uh, to the bad guys. And that claim has been about 350,000 to bring in outside IT folks to fix the problem and clear all the files. And then we spent about 100,000 trying to notify everyone and provide credit monitoring. Now, the one that I think it scared everyone in North Carolina this year. Really, it started in December of 17 as Rockingham County Schools. Now, what I will put to you here is what's in the papers. We were not privy to that claim. But uh, I guess a email with, a, with an attachment made it past the firewall. An employee clicked on the, on the attachment, and it encrypted the entire computer system at Rockingham County Schools. Preliminary estimates are 1 to 1.5 million. It has been easier for them to buy new servers and download old data than it is to go in and clean up those servers and try to get them back to good. So <clears throat> they had, I believe, the current policy that you have now uh, on, attached to a general liability policy, which has left them substantially short in terms of the payment that they are looking at. They're over a million dollars short. So what we have proposed is a, right now is a million dollar policy that would provide liability protection. So if you were to release name, dates of birth, social security numbers, <coughs> and employees went to get an auto or a home loan, they could not do that. They blamed the school system for releasing their information and brought a lawsuit against you. It could be vendors, it could be parents, student information, any of those. Something I always forget too, and I want to mention now, this is not just a cyber loss. If they were to break into the storage warehouse and steal high school transcripts, bankers' boxes of paper from the 70s and 80s, that is a data loss. That would be covered. We call it cyber liability, but it's any release of personally identifiable information or any attack upon the network from outside sources. So liability protection you have, or would have, regulatory action if you were to lose employer student health records and the Attorney General's office were to come in and levy a fine or the feds levy a fine against the school system under a HIPAA violation, that would be coverage provided as well. Event management would be the biggie. That is the cost to notify everyone, and that puts the burden on the insurance company to notify, because your retirees, if their information were affected, and they lived in, let's just say, 40 to 50 states, you guys have to comply with those laws where they reside, not where the Board of Education is. Massachusetts is notified immediately upon discovery. It, that's, I don't know if it's practical, but that's what the law is there. 
So we'll notify everybody, provide credit monitoring, we'll bring in an outside IT firm to assess, maybe spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to help you guys clean up, rectify. We'll bring in outside legal, not folks that do wills and trusts, but people who deal with this type, you know, insurance coverage. We'll also bring in a public relations firm. Dr. Fritz, you can look on online. Again, I'm speaking of what I've seen online, but uh, your counterpart in Rockingham delivering about a 32 minute presentation to the media on what happened and what they were going to do to remedy. So we can bring in outside resources to all of you to help in that case. Cyber extortion, a ransomware attack. You come in Monday morning at 7 a.m., all the computers are shut down, and the only thing you have on the screen is send us $15,000 in Bitcoin. Well, they are set to, the insurance carrier is set to respond to those. Last, reputation guard. At the end, when it's all said and done, we can try to put out a positive information or a positive flow of information to you to the public. Say, here's what's happened, here's what we've done to rectify that, and here's why we believe the data is safe with us going forward. So that would be the top coverages we're talking about. We would also include a full prior acts endorsement. If you started the coverage 7-1, anything that happened that day or after would be covered. But let's just suppose there is a virus in the system that somebody put there in November of 16, but they wait until October of 18 to activate. So we'll go back as long as you don't know about it. We'll go back and protect you. Um, all of those, I guess for anything you don't know about, that's already there, but has yet to be activated. So we'll give you full prior acts. A couple of things that uh, AIG will do, the insurance company, they will provide up to what's valued at $10 per person for online training. Um, if you've got a thousand employees, they will include the on annual online training. So that's about a $10,000 value, I guess, uh, that they will include with their policy. They also uh, include a vulnerability scan. They partner with IBM. But they'll send a signal to your computer system, give you a comprehensive report back on the strengths and weaknesses, things that you do. So not only are they trying to protect you with the claim, but they're trying to give you some resources and value adds to try to prevent the claim. Uh, some other things they'll do, first 72 hours, they'll waive the deductible, which is $10,000. So for the first 72 hours of the claim, if we can remedy everything in that first 72 hours, up to $250,000, they will waive that deductible. The reason they do that, if if they're only infecting eight computers and you wait a week or two, then it turns out you guys couldn't handle it and it's 800 computers, let them know they'll try to come in earlier and maybe make a, take care of a $10,000 problem before it becomes a $100,000 problem. AIG, they are the leader in North Carolina, not North Carolina, in the United States in providing cyber liability insurance. So that's more or less a overview of what we would be talking about offering. Any questions or anything else I could try to answer? I've got one. I don't believe I heard. Which company do you represent? I, we work with AIG. You work with AIG. Now okay. we're Sarah Insurance. We're an agent broker that represents many carriers, but AIG we believe has the best program, especially for public entities in the Carolinas. Okay. What's the policy? What does it cost? Uh, you're going to be looking at about twelve thousand dollars, twelve to fourteen thousand dollars annually. So as I've mentioned before, on the on the risk management side, the services they offer, it's a twelve thousand dollar policy. But if you take advantage of the online training and the vulnerability scanning and the other things, you can in essence buy the training within the policy. And hey, AIG likes that because it makes you a better risk, it makes you safer and less likely to click on those attachments. So I don't want to say if you don't use those services, it's twelve thousand dollar policy. But if you'll take advantage and put those resources out there to employees and others, then it can sort of pay for itself. I think it's a shame we even have to talk about having yeah. to deal with this kind of thing, but in the, in the world we live in, it's, it's what we have to deal with. It's a shame. Folks, we work, this may help you too. We work with 86 of the 115 LAAs, including you guys, doing some part or all of their insurance. And of those 86, approximately 60 have taken, not only taken coverage with us, but taken coverage with the AIG policy. And what, uh, <laughs> what kind of policy do we have now? What kind of investment? And don't have. <laughs> no, it's, it's minimal. Willamette, do you know what the... Right off the hand, I believe it's, it's the rider within our policy. It's minimal liability, I believe. The maximum liability, I believe, I, I want you to refer to the policy and check with your provider. For liability, it would be 100000 and then no more than 100000 of expenses that it would pay. But riders on the policies are subject to far broader exclusions. In essence, free versus 12000 For $12,000, this ought to be providing coverage and this is your data 
anywhere in the world. So if Amazon Web Services is hacked in the state of Washington and your data is compromised and they don't have enough cyber insurance or not any at all, at any at all this covers you. So this is your data anywhere in the world, no matter if you guys cause the breach, one of your vendors cause the breach, or whomever it may be. So it's, it's, it's obviously more expensive, but this is, this is the policy that um, public entities are looking toward, and certainly the folks like Targets, the Fortune 500s, have had in place now for many years. And you said the premium would be how much again? It, it, anywhere from twelve to fourteen thousand dollars, depending on which option you were to take. Okay. Well, I'm going, I'm leading to another question. It looks like that we're a pretty loyal customer of yours. Is that the best price you can do? That is the best price. Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> well, since it's a no action item, are we looking just to give them direction on what to bring back to us? Ah. I mean, I sure it is. Yep. It's a no action item. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. That's it. All Anything right. else I can provide? Does anybody else have any questions of this gentleman, Mr. Wright, at this time? No. Yeah. Thank you, folks, for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. Wright, it don't hurt to ask to get a cheaper price, does it? Uh, it never does, sir. No, it does not. Okay. We did get the same request for the 2 information. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. Okay. I just hit the wrong button. What's next? I got a, I got a question about the attachment. That's there. Okay. Uh, about, our, about our general policies. I, I, the one that just struck me odd is the flood insurance we're paying for the plan ops building. Part of it is the $400,000 in content. The base flood for that area, I believe we checked today, was 10 feet and it's minus 2. 2.7. 2.7. Oh. So, and that's driven off of the fed, Fed's rate table. We don't have any. We need to move them somewhere else. I know that's an extremely. I mean, twenty-five grand a year. I mean, after about three years, couldn't we raise it and save money? It's eight times more than what we pay for Snowden. Yeah, uh -huh. an entire. School. We thought Snowden was bad, and I thought Snowden was beat up worse. Oh yeah. You know, I, I just I, you know I, that's something we need to look I, at seriously. I agree. Yeah, I'm not questioning. <laughs> We didn't say that. <laughs> a moved facility. <laughs> we want to move the facility stand. Is that good? Don't Moving too excited. Are two very different trains of thoughts. I just okay. Good job. Anything else, Butch? No, I, okay. I just that's something I think we need to discuss further. How much would it be to raise it? A lot. Well, that's a lot. <laughs> three years, 75, you're paying yeah. three years. You're paying over seventy-five thousand. Uh, you got to look at it both ways. All right, moving right on down the agenda, Mr. Huggins, you're next. How are we all today? Um, this kind of really dovetails greatly with what Jim said in front of me. Training individuals how to expressly use technology correctly, uh, and that's something I think that we owe every one of our students uh, that we that we we touch on. Um, I want to talk today about BYOT. Um, it's not BYOD, which is device. When you say BYOD, bring your own device, it's kind of like bring your own cell phone. And this is only bring, bring your own approved technology. We at Pepper County Schools would approve whatever technology that this child would bring into the schools. We've had an interest in this with some of our schools. And the technology that we're referring to is any uh, privately owned laptop, Chromebook, Android, or Windows tablet, or an iPad not a cellular phone. Um, it's difficult for teachers to see what's on the cellular phone or my, our iPad mini on that. Uh, each device that would be allowed to be brought in would be approved by Buffer County Schools and a small decal would be attached to it for easy recognition of the teachers. Um, our students are digital natives. The lowest technology that my daughter knows of is an iPhone. Uh, I myself know real real uh, and that's uh, ancient technology but all she knows is an iPhone. And so she's a digital native, born with that in her hand, and she actually understands and knows more than my senior that just graduated from high school when it comes to an iPad or it comes to a Chromebook. Uh, we live in a world today that is consumed with creation and consumption, and it occurs at an ever rapidly rate every single time. And to access these tools and resources in this ever-changing world, uh, we need to understand how to use these tools, and the kids need to understand the appropriate level at which to use these tools. Uh, and I think it's imperative for their education that we teach them. I envision a learning environment at Boca County Schools as being technology as part of us, not apart from technology. And 
what would be uh, why would TB used for in Butler County Classroom? Well, first, it would be used as digital textbooks. Um, textbooks that um, we, we had in digital form, projects uh, that would be used for subject related videos, research, and learning management systems. We currently subscribe to uh, Canvas Learning Management System and also Google Classroom, which is free. And teachers utilize these in, in classrooms that have technology to run their classrooms from a digital platform and have a paperless environment. Um, also used for collaboration or taking notes. And they also can complete their homework on their own device at home, even if they don't have the internet. There are softwares that are free out there that we can utilize that allows them to download the, the information at school and complete it offline at home. And when they get to the school, it will be uploaded. So this kind of solves that problem with research today, I mean, with subjects that we had today. The focus of this whole point is curriculum. Students may not use any device or access to our internet for non-educational purposes at any time unless it is expressly guaranteed by and granted by the school administrator or by the teacher. I'd like to show you a video now in which uh, I produced at one of our local schools which shows how not to use technology in the classroom and then how to use technology in the classroom. So if you watch this short two minute video. training and proper um, use of classroom space I believe that all classes can become digital spaces and what what is when I say BYOT what is allowed well any device that can connect to our BCS wireless network devices may include but are not limited to of course set uh, 9.7 inch iPads I think anything anything below 9 inches is difficult for a teacher to see on there or a 9 inch Windows or, or Android tablet any laptop Mac or PC or any Chromebook now, uh, the question was brought out of what about students that can't bring their own devices. VCF will furnish, of course, devices for students who can't bring those. Uh, when one device is brought, though, in a high school setting, it frees up four devices uh, at, that, at that school because they're used four times during the course of the day. Students, this is how it will work. Students will access the internet through our wireless network. The network will provide filtered internet content just like we do with the, every computer that we have. Z scale will monitor and filter that content. Any and all access will be monitored for the purpose of network security, what this gentleman was talking about before, or for and for student safety. This can be done with physical monitor, monitoring or a, a software such as Dino, which is a monitoring software that currently Southside and EdTech, uh, not EdTech, Southside and Early College use. Uh, this allows a teacher, that teacher that was in that classroom, can see on her iPad exactly what is on the screen of each student at any given time 
lock them out, send them the correct site they need to be on, or, or take a screenshot of what they're doing. So how are we going to do this? My proposal is to, to, to get both elite teachers and instructional leaders starting this summer with how to train them how to conduct a digitally enabled classroom. Um, those lead teachers and instructional leaders will develop digital, what, what a digital classroom looks like, lesson plans for subjects, and also best practices that they've encountered in the schools that they have, that they have one-to-one uh, -one in, their, in their schools. And from these sessions, we would teach classroom teachers how to, how, how to conduct that over the course of some during the summer, but most of the course of next semester. So these are the schools that have expressed interest in going with a BYOT program. Snowden School, Bath, Washington, and all high schools. Washington Art currently has, has implemented already a one-to-one -one in certain classes. They do a coding class in which they allow their students to bring their devices and they're already done. So uh, when I talked to Mr. Swenson about it, he, was, uh, he said, we already do it. Yeah, we're ready for it. And um, Southside is already in a one-to-one -one environment but they're going to have some devices that out, go out date, uh, uh, go out of date very shortly, and so they're going to drop their their uh, their uh, the, the devices that they have. Uh, the problem there was that a lot of devices were bought without sustainability in that school, so that's why some of them were going to go out. Uh, Northside is is probably the lowest amount of devices that, that any school has or one to one capability, uh, and Bath and Snowden want to enhance their programs as much as they can. So they're uh, Mr. Peck and Ms. Winley is ready to go with those. So, how soon can we do this? Well, that depends on two things, time and resources. Time to train every single teacher that would be involved six through 12 on this, because it would only be middle and high school. Um, and the resources. Uh, personnel would be needed to reach out to those teachers and train them and the principals on what to look for when they go to observe. Um, if we were to be able to get an, uh, instructional personnel, they would be uh, covering north side, south side, and either sharing the city schools or working through the city schools. Uh, our proposal is to start this, if we can get the training and the personnel, by 2019, January, second semester of next time. I don't think it could be done any earlier uh, because our, some of our teachers are just not ready for that. Uh, there are several teachers that we have at, at Washington and Southside and EdTech that are one-to-one -one and, and, and can be used as instructional leaders in their schools. But uh, to touch up, this is touching a lot of teachers, six to 12. Any questions? I'll turn the lights back on. You said six to twelfth grade, Paul. Sir, you said six to twelfth grade. Is it what Middle, you said? Middle and high school. Why aren't some of the other schools, C, uh, CMS, PS Jones? I, I went to each school list? and talked to their principals, and um, the, the schools that we showed were the only schools that expressed interest in it. I think if we could implement these uh, in these schools, I think they would see a working program that would work, and they would be left behind on that. But, we, we really need, P.S. Jones is a school that really needs it. What I was going to say, they're feeding into Washington, and it's a huge school, 800 kids. It is, and by the time the kids get to Washington, they need to be, That's right. uh, they need to understand how to use a, a device, they need to understand the proper use of the device, mm -hmm. and, 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 and the, how to use it with these particular subject matter. So when they get out, mm -hmm. you know, they can say that, you know, they're interviewing for a, a position, and, you know, can you use this? Yes, I've got experience with this, that, and that. Terry, I can't imagine if we, if, if we elected uh -huh. to do this that we wouldn't have everybody on board within That's, a few I mean, months. I, mean, oh, I agree. It's That's a no-brainer. I just want to say why they weren't already yeah. on the list. I agree. <laughs> we don't have the resources to supply every school with one-to-one. -one. Well, when you say the schools are – I mean, the, the schools you're talking about, I know are already doing quite a bit of this, some of them. Um, is this – when you say they're wanting it more, are we talking to administrators or are we talking to teachers and the staff? Um, in other words, I, see, I, I, I understand that Ms. you mentioned Mr. Swenson at Washington. Well, I spoke, I spoke to each principal, I mean, but, all 14 you know, of them. I'm just saying, uh, how far down the list in the school well, are I, they Well, over the past several years, I've visited, I'm not visited, I've, I've done training at schools. Sure. And when I bring training out to the individual schools, I get the feedback sometimes that, yeah, this would be great if we had devices to do that with. Gotcha. And so over the past several years, of me being a director of technology, uh, in of technology I, I, I seeing where the, the needs at and I, I, the whole the whole system needs this I, and I, I agree <coughs> with all of that i'm just trying to think in my mind how much of the summer are these teachers willing to give up for training that's why i want to stress this this first semester <laughs> when you say a session how long two sessions how long is a session yeah, is a session a day? a day a week 
What, what is this consideration? What I would do session? with the instructional leaders and school lead teachers would be for two days this summer. Um, we would, uh, my, what, what my vision is is to have them come in, let's talk about their best practices, and then actually run classes like they would and let them be students and model. And then from that, we would get lesson plans and best practices from each teacher and go around that's already doing okay. one to one in their schools, and so we can move that on to, to the teachers next semester. I just wondered why it would take so long to get it implemented if the session isn't any longer than that. But well, that's just what do I know? That's for the lead teachers to uh, come up with the session for the regular teachers. Uh, the regular teachers that are being taught by them and helped in the session could take five, six, seven <coughs> you know, sessions to do that or over a period of several months. I, I think <coughs> it could be a slow process, but I think yeah. it's like. Dr. Phipps said, as it gets going, it'll be a no-brainer, and you'll have more and more that want to do it, but that'll just be a work in progress, won't it? Yes. We yes, think it will be. Left you talk about policies that we have in place? Yeah, yeah, we already have a policy in place, 3200, which is in place that allows uh, the superintendents to direct the DYT program. Uh, this is the plan for the program. And, and as a devil's advocate, I can understand the concern. Uh, the liability comes into broken and stolen devices. Mm -hmm. um, is, is that an issue on the places that are already doing something similar? Uh, in the policy, it stated that, of course, Berkeley County Schools is not responsible for anything brought to school uh, on that, and that the individual that brings that is responsible for that. They're not required to bring it by any means. It's a voluntary <coughs> thing. If they want to bring it, they can. And uh, I feel that if a person brings their own device, they're more, more apt to, to work with that device. They're more familiar with it. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. It's probably going to be more up-to-date than what we can give them. Uh, and once this does get going and they see what uh, authorized devices are used, I foresee second semester Christmas gifts and birthdays coming in for educational gifts that would for, right. for so students to have. And of course, like I said, they don't have it. We have, we'll furnish the ones that don't. I, I can understand as a parent, some of the newer iPads, the more sophisticated they get, they can get up to eight, nine hundred dollars I would be probably very hesitant to send that with my 12-year-old, 6th oh, yes, exactly. grader. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the bus with a device like that because then the way they sling book bags and things like that I can see where uh, once it comes home with a broken screen and a parent is calling wanting somebody other than his or her son to be responsible you know I just wonder so we become totally not liable for it no matter how it's broken or stolen right well I'm, I'm assuming if, it, if it's the, the teacher breaks it um, we would be liable. Right, sure. Right. right. But uh, the policy states that we're not liable for that. That's what the policy yeah. states. And the user agreement would have that in also. Okay. The, okay. The, uh, It'd be understood before a child ever takes yes, it from well, they would have to, like I said, to be an authorized device, they would have to have a class of how to, how to act, how to treat a device. Uh, they would sign a user agreement. The parents would have, uh, we've discussed having a meeting during orientation okay. about having a parent meeting, how right. to handle devices and stuff like that. We're going to go out of our way to make sure the devices are, are, are handled properly, but of course something's going to happen. Sure. Sure. That's great. Any other questions? Any questions? Comments? You've got a lot of ground to cover. I know. A lot of ground. So um, hopefully you guys will consider some personnel to helping with this, with instructional technology. <coughs> oh, I knew that was leading to something. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, 5.3, Washington High School robots presentation. Mr. Walcott. Mm -hmm. Good evening, uh, my name is Damon Walcott. I really appreciate you letting me be here to, to give you a real brief presentation. I um, wasn't quite sure exactly what y'all wanted to see, so I've got quite a bit on a video and I'm just gonna show just a little small piece of it. Um, so again, I, I'm from Washington High School, a visual art teacher, but I have a CTE certification as of this last year, so I'll have the chance to also teach a CTE class this next year, try to get some kids uh, certified in Adobe, um, which would help them in the future, of course, with any kind of um, graphic design or videography, any of those kinds of careers that kids seem to be really excited about getting into lately. Um, so I, I teach a video course, and some of the things that I could show you tonight are about that, but. Really what I'd rather talk about is robotics. So uh, Paul had, in the middle or the beginning of fall of this last year, had come to our school and trained some of us teachers about robotics, uh, specifically a Sphero. And it's controlled by a personal uh, device. I've got a cart of iPads in my class. 
and he, he taught us about the, the Sphero balls and, and how the robotics are, are, are driven around. It's a, uh, it's a horizontal uh, vertical platform that they're driven by. Um, you can code them. You can do a free, free drive with them. And he asked, he said, well, our county has one set of these right now, and you can go ahead and sign up to get your class this. And I had a, a group of honors art students, and I raised my hand first. I said, let's, let's get these in. Let's see what these kids can do. Because I'm a firm believer in putting things in the hands of the students, giving them a challenge, and see if they can meet it. Um, so with that in mind, um, this, this slide is just a basic design process that I have taught by for years and years. It's a, really an industry standard and philosophy on how people operate um, really in, in a wide variety of corporate levels. I came from the corporate world before I started to become a teacher. And really, it's, it all comes with uh, the number one, stating a problem. You uh, generate ideas. This, this actually probably happens in your board room all the time. Um, you select some solutions. You build an item. You figure out some kind of uh, an answer to the solution. You evaluate it, and then you present some results. So with that in mind, uh, I got the, the group of um, robotic, these devices, into the class. And I said, OK, students, we have one week to figure out what, how these will fit into our curriculum, what we can do with them, how can we create artwork with these. Um, so we broke them up, broke the students into teams. Um, I had them uh, generate some ideas. And they kind of came up with two basic ideas. One was to try to do time-lapse time photography with it. And another was to try to paint with these, because they did some research. And they said, hey, these are waterproof. We can paint with these things. I said, all right, well, you gathered the materials. Tell me exactly how this is going to look, and then let's go with it. So in, in that week's time, they, uh, they did these two general things. And I've got those on a PowerPoint on a video to show you. <coughs> another part of what we do is, since you know, if the technology is in the class, I have kids document all these things. So I had kids on cameras and, and pulling out their getting cameras into the classroom to see. Um, so this first slide again shows kind of more my approach to this. Um, and then this next is the engineering design process, which if uh, you were to go into an engineering career, this is the type of philosophy, design philosophy that, that they're going to follow all the time. And I'm going to jump ahead just a little bit because I had some, OK, here we go. So this is digital, digital photography. This year. First thing you'll see is when we, uh, we took these into the auditorium um, at Washington High School and it, he used a class period to drive them around, see how they operated, do some coding with them. Uh, we had cameras all over the place. This was one student's idea to do a time lapse of the entire classroom for that class period. You can't really see, but most of the time I'm just monitoring the process and I'm asking questions, getting them to make decisions getting them to change and challenge their ideas, think of new things to do. Here's some of the digital photography we came up with. That was spelled out through coding. And then this was the painting. So the next few days, we, uh, we did some preliminary, preliminary designs just by taking a cardboard box. I'm very frugal, so we, we take anything that we can recycle. So we were talking about building frames, and I sent a kid down the hall to get a cardboard box. <laughs> that worked just fine. So here we're driving this around, trying to see how we can uh, do random, random paint design. We talked about color theory. Um, so this just lasts for a few seconds. Some of the paintings that resulted from this. We got all the, the devices in the hands of the students. And as the time progressed, we talked more about color theory. We talked more about the, how you can use these robotics in not only this classroom, but in the cross-curricular opportunities. This is where we said, well, why, why go small? Let's go big. So we built a, went down to the construction, got some scrap wood from them, got a canvas that was donated to us from a local company, and we did a large painting, which Paul and I have, and we can show you this in a few minutes. What's amazing here is that the process of design that uh, Mr. Walcott and students went through, with this they were able to take smaller paintings and learn what layer to add, what layer to what layer to get a defined, crisp, crisp painting that pops. And this is just a phenomenal thing. This is what we want to show you now. Yeah. Is the painting never touched by human hands. A robot painting.
This might resemble a Jackson Pollock. <laughs> this unfortunately is not worth millions of dollars, but uh, yeah, it's, it, like Paul said, it's, it's an interesting experimentation with robotics in the visual arts. Mm -hmm. If you can do it in the visual arts, you got to think you can pretty mm -hmm. much do it in all three of those. Turn, Turn around to the camera. camera. Yeah. One of our goals this year was to bring technology to art and music. You got it upside down. What, what's going on behind the scenes with the sphere which was a little ball that you saw is actual coding that students are able to do that, that control the direction it moves in it's computer programming that students don't even realize they're doing. It's what I did back in the 80s and 90s of actually having to, to code computer programs. They're learning it in a, in a neat way, and it, it really is a way to advance and accelerate what they're able to do on a, on a coding. And if you program. ask, do students, will they want to do this kind of technology? This Just this afternoon when I was leaving, my 12-year-old was at our kitchen table coding his own game on his iPad. I said, where'd you get that game? Oh, I'm making it, Dad. I, I coded it myself. Same coding that uses the Swift, <laughs> yes. the Swift robots, the same exact coding Dr. Phil's talking about is Swift programming. That's the same thing that every app on the iPad or a iPhone's made. Same technology. David, will you talk for a minute? Because I was impressed when I heard you mention this about the food pantry and, yes. the, and the way you move between different departments and different areas of curriculum to solve a need, but you pulled in students from all across the school to do that. Can you Absolutely, just yes. explain to them um, what you did? Through, through conversations with community, um, a community church, uh, conversations with a uh, social studies teacher in our hallway, we were talking about need and the hunger. Um, the, the, we have a food pantry at our school already, and we were talking about that, and the community um, uh, organization, they said, well, you know, there are different ways of, of handling hunger. Could you all come up with some solutions? And I was in a meeting and I said, well, you know, put the task to high school students, the brilliant minds, let's see what they can come up with. So we did a few days of uh, hunger study, uh, worldwide, national-wide, uh, state, county, and then in Washington. And the kids were surprised at the numbers of how many kids in their own, in their own peer groups go to bed hungry, uh, go to school hungry. So I, I gave them the challenge, how could we, how could you uh, address some of these hunger needs and they, they said, you know, that we did some research, give them a couple days, and they had technology in their hand, and they went online, and they said there are these, these free pantries. And I was hoping that they would come up with that. Um, that's what I really wanted to, but they came up with it themselves. They said, we want to build free pantries. So in my art class, uh, we did prototype designs, and they built different prototypes. I had a local organization come in. They judged the designs. Uh, we took the winning design, and I went down to our construction class, and he programmed that into his, uh, how, whatever the, what's the name CNC. of that? CNC machine. And through that, that collaboration from the design process to the building process, we're able to deliver that product and now it's installed on Third Street in Washington. Um, we did the ribbon cutting a couple weeks ago and now it's providing food for anyone who would like to come and take it. And our hope is that with that design that's already programmed in the machine, um, if somebody anywhere in the state or in the United States or across the world were to say, we'd like one of those, it'd be a few simple pushes of the button. The machine will cut it back out. We could send them the kit. And here's your little free pantry to serve your community with. Again, it's the generated ideas by the students. And what really was touching to me is when we're sitting in class and we're talking about hunger, and um, I told kids, I said, so the neat thing is, some of you will be able to contribute to this pantry. But chances are, the kids sitting right next to you will need to take that food. And kids in class were willing to say, that's me. I, I, I went to bed last night and didn't have dinner, so I'm going to be using that. And it just brought this nice sense of com camaraderie within the, within the students through that co collaboration. So yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Walcott? Yeah, um, <clears throat> are you familiar so, with um, I think it's called East Carolina Robotics, High School Robotics Team or something. There's there's a group, I know some of the Pitt County schools are involved in it, and I, I've been meaning to get up with Paul about it. Um, there's a project engineer at PCS, or at Nutrien, excuse me, is uh, very involved with it, and they actually give grants to schools to help buy the stuff to start a robot, robotics program. And I think, I think it would be very beneficial for, if Washington's interested, or any of our high schools, 
to, to get involved with that. And I, I'll be glad to share his information with you. Um, please, yeah, please get. I've heard about it. We currently have a robotics uh, lab <coughs> for our um, elementary. Okay. Um, but uh, the schools themselves, due to the funding, have to fund it themselves. And that would be fantastic if we could get a grant from they, someone. They do. They actually increase our teams because some schools they say would have more. They got kids who want to do it, but they only afford one or two teams. I, I'll, um, I'll get up with you tomorrow and get you his information. Yes, sir. Uh, he, he's interested in spreading it all over eastern North Carolina. He's, like I said, he's got several yeah, teams in, in Pitt County. And so I have it there. <clears throat> Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Amazing teaching. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Good for today. That's awesome. Next item is child nutrition update. Mr. Dunn? Yes, sir. Just wanted to uh, inform the board on uh, some information about our child nutrition program this year. You know, we were in the uh, first year of the community eligibility program that allowed us to offer free breakfast and free lunch at all of our <coughs> schools with the exception of uh, early college high school. Um, that program, I would just remind you, does last for the next three years. Uh, we will be reapplying, but um, it's kind of a double-edged sword. If uh, basically, if the community gets better in Bovert County, then we don't continue to be eligible. So there may come a day when we're back to handing out free and reduced lunch forms again and talking about student debt and chasing down folks to pay off student debt. That, that certainly could happen, but that's also a sign that things are much more prosperous if that happens. So, um, but our current grant does last for three more years. Um, this year, we were uh, our, our number of breakfasts actually, and, and lunches for that matter, stayed relatively close to last year. Last year served 302,574. This year, 30612, so very close. Last year, lunch is 737,755. This year, 792,293. So roughly, um, give or take, certainly about 60 more, 60,000 more lunches. So breakfast stayed about very close. Um, this year, at the beginning of the year, you may or may not remember, uh, we estimated that the early college meals would roughly cost the Board of Education $5,000 because the board voted that if everyone else was going to receive free lunch and breakfast, that early college should as well. Um, uh, again, a double-edged sword, the kids at early college took it to heart that breakfast and lunch was free, and so the bill is now $14,680, not $5,000. Um, on the flip side, we are able to now charge, for the first time in recent memory, child nutrition indirect costs, which we have not been doing in the past, to the tune of $20,000. So it's essentially a wash on your bill for the lunch versus the indirect costs. So, um, and that's just just want to kind of keep you in the loop on some things going on in child nutrition. Gotcha. If you do the quick math on that, that's more than a million yeah. meals yeah. a year. It's wow. it's incredible what the child nutrition folks do in our school system. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Doan, I'm gonna let you continue to have the floor. Local budget discussion. Just something very easy. Um, okay. So, uh, the uh, county commissioners um, approved the budget for uh, next the upcoming year last night. And we received information about uh, what our funding would be from the local commissioners. So we placed this under discussion, um, no action, but certainly if the board's will is to move it under action, then that's okay as well. Uh, there are two budgets to look at. Um, we could start with the capital budget if you okay. prefer. Mm -hmm. That's fine. The document that you have in front of you, the amount at the top, the commissioner's projected appropriation, that is the actual appropriation. It's no longer projected. That is the magic number for 1819 for capital projects um, what you have you have the potential savings for some projects in the past all the way dating back to 15 through 18 this is not a guaranteed dollar figure but this is what we project in terms of the savings twelve thousand dollars is not a huge cushion and we've certainly used a lot of maintenance projects this year that would eat up that twelve thousand dollars the fiscal 18 projects you see the the uh, $200,000 remains that would be committed to projects that we're hoping to finish up this summer. Those would be the roofing projects you see there, parking lot, uh, erosion, <coughs> getting started on the erosion uh, at the south side. Uh, we are in the process of placing out uh, RFPs for the remaining projects that haven't been started and with the parking lot and paving. The roofs are already, Stan, correct me if I'm not bad mistaken, already under construction or, and or finished. Oh, so in theory, Assuming that all those projects come in at the projected amount, we will spend that two hundred thousand one hundred seventy-seven and fifty-seven dollars this summer to complete that list. Mark, one of those is carried over into the 
fiscal year 19 project, though, right? The, the erosion, erosion project, project, yes. The 20,000 by itself is not enough to cover the south side erosion project, so that 20,000 would have to be moved into the 19, 18, 19 projects to add to the money that we had budgeted, hopefully. You'll see a $40,000 line item for that. Really, the total price is 60. It just came out of two years. Mm -hmm. So, and the board decided these were the fiscal year 1819 uh, projects that you would request. So there's the list. Um, of course, the total on that is one million three hundred sixty-four thousand eight hundred dollars, which mean, puts us two hundred forty-nine one hundred five short of what the commissioners gave us. So the Dr. Phipps, myself, and Stan discussed if there was anything off the list that we might uh, cut or change so that we come in at budget price, and I think. Uh, I would turn it over to Stan if you want to talk a little bit about what we thought about doing at Northside High School and the children replacement. <clears throat> One thing we looked at and we looked at previously um, before we were looking at totally replacing Northside's chillers would be a revamp of the existing chiller. Um, the coal is the main thing. The coals are deteriorated in non-coated coals, um, which is required now. Um, so. I took it th four or five different options of doing, but the best, my best recommendation would be would it be cancel the replacement of the north side chillers, um, spend around fifty thousand in replacing the coals. That should give us three to five years more run out of that chiller. We'll have the parts left over from the south side where we're replacing those that we can help keep that one running along, and that would free up that fund. So it roughly free up two hundred and fifty some thousand dollars. I don't know the exact number, math right quick, but. Uh, now what that way we can make it work what is the what, what was the refresh my memory what was the issue with the south side <coughs> chillers um, chillers yeah they're 22 freon they're aged out a lot of issues a lot of issues with the coils because they were non-coated coils too we've got one of the three that is down now we've started cannibalizing it to keep the other two running all right. um, and we can run and maintain as long as we don't break the 90 figure if we break in the 90s then the school temperature is compromised so Right. Okay. So what you plan to do at Northside cannot be done at Southside. The same. Well, that's outside. where I was going. I think yeah, yeah. With the cost of it and the cost of the 22 Freon, which is not available anymore, we would consume that 22 Freon to take to Northside. We check with the environmental folks. We can legally move it and use it without having it reclaimed. So we can keep ours without buying all this high expensive stuff. We don't. It would cost a whole lot more money if we have to recharge those. You're talking about thirty thousand dollars to Freon to fix that one that's down now, plus coals, plus everything else. So it just gets to be an eating factor. Right. I mean, eventually you got to yeah. replace. I get. Yeah. It. So say one more time what you what, what you were going to to cancel the north side project for as a replacement and spend fifty thousand dollars. Roughly fifty to fifty-three thousand right. on the existing unit, and that will free up enough money to balance the budget. Yeah, because you've got it. If you take safety, security, technology, and the two chillers, you have to do something to those items because you can leave those items and take everything else out. It's only two hundred five thousand dollars. Correct. So you, you have that's to do. That's the way I ran it every way. Yeah. So you've got to do something to one of those four. One of the major ones. So figure out which one. And it's not going to be safety security problem. It doesn't need to be technology. No, but you could so, probably take 50 from technology. Yeah, that'd be your only choice. So you're still looking at the chillers having to do. I don't think it's much to talk about. On some of these other ones, I mean, have we got we got prices on the envelope for Northeast at 40,000? No, ma'am. What we were looking at it was that was to hire an architectural firm to look at the building. And then give us procedure to fix it. If you know, the forty thousand, twenty thousand did the design, then we would actually spend the other twenty thousand on the building and start trying to make the improvements to correct those two buildings because they were totally constructed very, okay. very poorly as far as exterior envelope and okay. no insulation, nothing above ceilings, just. I think the no construction that, management. Yeah, the rub on that for a lot of people is that's just in in our minds we don't realize the age of the school because we still consider it a new school. And, and the money that we've had to spend on that new school is almost equal to what we spent on some of the older schools. And it's just, it's, it's older really schools were built a whole lot better. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Before we give him an answer on that, can we hear the discussion on the local budget? Sure. Yep. I mean, that's just, that's just my thought. That's fine. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Where, where are we at on fund balance? 
for capital? Yeah. None. 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 So we ain't got 249 left. Minus 249,000. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and some change. That was brief. Start, Start digging. That was brief deduction there, Michael. <laughs> All right, local? Okay. Yes, you're local. So if you look at the 1819 local budget, uh, the appropriation from the, the county's doing the appropriation a little differently this year when it comes to they uh, separated out a line item specifically for school resource officers because the goal is to have a school resource officer at all 13 campuses, early college courses on the campus of, of Bover Community College, so they have uh, their, own air, their own security there. So the local current expense, uh, 14 million 140000 then school resource officers, 765 362000 for a total appropriation of 15157502 We anticipate fines and forfeitures hopefully in the number of 300000 which would bring us to total local county dollars, 15457502 The costs, recurring costs uh, for this year, we anticipate 14000 excuse me, $14,887,005. <laughs> We can deduct 194,865 from funds that we previously used that were state funds dedicated to school resource officers, and we can reallocate those to other areas in this budget. Since the line item for the school resource officers from the county now includes all 13, so that brings down to neat 14,692,140. Do you know how they came up with that total? 50, I'm, I'm assuming it's a it's a per divided by believe, 13. But I, mean, I can't give you the exact number, but roughly 58,000 per um, employee times. So did they get that figure from the sheriff's department or office or whatever <laughs> we're supposed to call it, or did they get it from the state? I mean, I, the that's medium, my question. They use the medium salary for their officers. Okay. That's what I'm always so that because figure. there was some discussion. <laughs> from that office that that was not exactly the correct amount. That's my concern is, is that what we're really talking about or is that a guesstimate? That's the number they gave us. Okay. Okay, so that wow. 765,000 is for 13 positions. Yes, sir. The seven we're supposed to have and six additional. Yes, sir. So, okay. But now that opens up another question I have on this because I'm not a big fan. I just want to go on record for this. Of working with the sheriff's department again on this because they've let us down again this year as this whole board knows what guarantees do we have moving forward that we're going to actually have these 13 people at each of these schools well we're getting ready to start the process of looking at our contract for next year so that's something that we would discuss with the sheriff's <coughs> department. Okay. Is, is that is that seven hundred sixty five thousand dollars going to come to Beaufort County Schools or is that going to go to Beaufort County Sheriff's Office it comes to the school system and then we would whatever <coughs> vendor in this case the sheriff's office we, we've been okay. using and we I, would turn around and send it back and I want to piggyback on what I was talking about is salaries do not equal the presence of an officer and what I mean by that is what was explained to me is that it's not just an officer it is training it is a vehicle it are uh, there are other expenses and who yep. pays those right because an officer doesn't drive their personal car to a school to be a resource officer they drive the car from the sheriff's department so what was explained to me was that the salary is not what the cost is. So my concern is they're going to cover salaries, but who's going to foot the bill for the vehicles for each officer, for the training for each officer? Do you follow me? Well, now those, right. don't, I don't want there to be a surprise. Those school resource officers ain't making $58,000 a year. No. no, they're not. I mean, I, I, so I, I I'm, a, I'm assuming... I'm assuming that's a padded number to to cover My understanding training the vehicles, is salary and benefits for individual and they don't make that much money. No. They don't and, make and that. And other costs. I don't I mean, have to even ask them that. Yeah. I, I when, 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 we, when we were talking about making city, that little to deal with that, no, we, we had an item of item right now. I don't even have to check. Included I, weapons I, and uniforms and all that. I was on that contract for three years as chairman. I know that's not true. We met with uh, Brian today and talked about were there any That's other costs, true. and we were told that there weren't. This was what the SRO cost would be to have them in the schools. Can now, whether that's going to be what picked that up by somebody, what does that include, though? Yeah, can we just check and make sure? Because off the record, okay. <clears throat> off the record, we, I was I, I had heard something different, and I just want to make okay. sure we're covering ourselves and that there won't be a hidden cost this. that they don't come up and go, oh, well, you've got to provide this us with five more vehicles. I just want to make sure, you know, this is this is not my money, this is the taxpayer money, and okay. I'm not going to spend money that we don't have. 
before I go any further with this on safety, or this is considered like a safety and security thing, Mr. Chairman, is this a conversation you want to have in open session? Because I, I got some more to say. Prefer not to have it in open okay, session. Because I got some more to say about this. I would rather but, keep it in closed session. About okay. what? This the SRO, which I consider part of our safety and security program. Right. I mean, before I say anything else, I just want to know: Am I supposed to say it here or in closed session? Well, it depends on what you're saying. If you're well, talking about well, once I say it, it's going to be too late to say it was the wrong thing to <laughs> say. <laughs> Maybe you could ask me ahead of time. Yeah. If you're talking okay, well, about keep their it. performance under the contract, that's that okay. should be done in public record. Okay, then I'll keep it. I'll keep it clean. Why would I want to go any deeper into a contract with these people than where I'm at right today? When I visited schools this week that is supposed to have a resource officer and they told me they have not seen a person from the Sheriff's Department since February. And they're supposed to be under our current contract. Is our current contract, which we just recently signed because we never could get a contract, is that the one that, does it run out in June? The June? I mean, because we literally just signed it, we I believe, Mr. Year. Chairman. It ends the end of this month. Okay. I realize they've passed the budget and it's in the budget and they're commissioners and that's their authority to do that. What happens if, if well, this and I'm just one person, but what if I say thank you but no thank you? Well, this is the amount of money that the county is deeming right. what it costs for an SRO. Right. And unless I'm mistaken, there's no guarantee that we would have to turn around and use the Sheriff's Department. I mean, this is the money that the county has allotted for us for SROs, right. but they could come from another source. But I, I'm right. assuming that I don't know that. Well, my concern is that if they can't hire a person since February to replace the one that we haven't had, how do I think they're going to hire me six more in addition to that? I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I want to work with them because I think that's probably the way to go. Right. But Mr. Chairman, we can't get one hired since February. <laughs> Why do I think six? we're going to hire six? I understand. Is this a what? discussion that we need to have with their representatives? I think somebody needs to be talking to I them and they need to come that. talk to yeah. us. I and think we need to back up right just a little bit because, because I think what center, they're doing here, center, Terry, mm -hmm. and correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, they're saying, hey, out this six hundred, this $765,000, <clears> we're going to give it to you. The county commissioners okay. are saying, you can, we're going to give you this to you, but these must be used, slotted for resource officers. Right. We can't utilize those funds for right. anything else. That's that's, they're not saying we have to work with the sheriff's department. We can go and work work with somebody else. Okay. okay. All right. All right. So I mean, that's that's the understanding, correct? Yeah, as far as I understand. Okay. Okay. So I'm happy with that. At least they're giving us something. I understand that. To to Carolyn's point, it may not cover everything, right? Because oh. I. I was going to ask if how are, are we guaranteed that the sheriff's office is going to give us thirteen people at fifty eight thousand? Well, that would be a, a, something that would probably be in the next contract, right? Because okay. I don't think. Well, what are we what are we paying per person now? Well, I guess we just we need to have a conversation with them. Yeah. I think we desperately need a conversation with right. them to go any further. Yeah, that's, right. that's all. We just need to talk well, on, to on them. that. On too that many things not clear. Are we paying for the right. use of vehicles? I have no idea. I'm just not to understand why we why they need vehicles. I think we just pay a flat. A flat fee. This is a flat in, amount, right? In the not? original conversations that I've been able to track back from Mr. Chrisman, who was their finance no, officer, no, and Mr. Polar, was that the county realized that there was only a certain amount of monies that we could access through the state to fund the positions, and that the county would be subsidizing the additional costs on the backside. They did not give us the money to turn around to have us give it back to them. They knew that they were going to absorb those additional costs. Okay. So it's basically driven off of the monies that we used at our at-risk program, which was state PRC um, 68. And then we received a grant, I believe it's PRC 39 for $60,000. So those are the monies that we've been giving them uh, on behalf of Boca County Schools for the SRO program with the understanding that they were eating or absorbing some of the costs on that side. What those specific okay. costs are, I, I don't know. I don't either. Okay. And I just would feel better if we knew that we're not going to be stuck with an additional large bill for 13. <coughs> well, I think that would also be in the contract right. as well, because the, the current contract states specifically the amount of money the school system will pay for the seven SROs that we currently should have. Okay. Right. For so them to be staffed at each school with the vehicle and the tr proper training. 
with what has been said and what I've heard, I'm assuming we're not going to move this to an action item tonight. We're going to leave this as a new action until we get some more answers. Is that correct? Well, I mean, I think the county's they giving us seven hundred sixty-five thousand yeah. dollars for SROs. Whether we Absolutely. turn around and use that with the sheriff's department right. versus some other entity, that's not, a lot. It's kind of a separate issue. Right. That's right. This is the amount that's of money right. they're giving us for that right. service. No discussion use. about that. That's right. right. I mean, not, I don't foresee them changing that dollar figure. Please, right. No I think only if we find out something very different than this, then it, I think it behooves us then to have communicate with the commissioners and say, this is what that actually pays for. And if that covers everything, great. And if it doesn't, we need to continue the conversation. Okay. Well, Willie Mack has stressed the word total, but I don't know really what total totally means, but we'll right. find that out. Okay. okay. But we can still move forward with this because, as Mark said, it's not going to change. The figure, right. that, that, the figure, not change right? This figure's not going to change. So, you, in our our request to the county, we previously noted the cuts and losses that we were uh, had not replaced the testing technician. That we were cutting seven local teaching <coughs> positions, and just for public information, there were four others that would be eliminated by state cuts. That did not change that cut. We uh, program enhancement. We had asked for an increase in technology. We'd actually asked for a hundred two hundred thousand dollars, but in this budget, we reduced it to a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. If you combine that with the capital, Mark would be at 450, which is approximately what he has this year. So that's his existing technology budget. We that, asked for that's not people, that's technology. Well, that 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 hundred that is all technology. That's software. That is programs. That's hardware. That is not people. Okay. That is not people. The increase in the virtual academy, we and included this in our original request, and we kept it in this revised budget. Uh, we pay our own teachers um, who could work for virtual public schools then in turn would serve some of the kids in Beaufort County. We're cutting out the middleman of the virtual public schools. Our own teachers make extra money by teaching online to our own students who take certain classes online. Some of that's in the exceptional children's department and the OCS classes. Um, some of that is if we are, have a teacher, unfortunately, have a vacancy, for example, and students might take an English class online. So we are paying a certain amount, but we're competing with virtual public schools. and. It would be nice to enhance what we're paying our local folks. So that's what that twenty thousand dollars would do. The uh, additional positions we had originally talked about. The one we had not talked about in the past is PS Jones. Um, Greg is not able. Greg uh, Singleton is not able at this time to do his presentation on Title One, Title Two. But I'm sure you remember from the past that there are different ways to split up the federal monies, and that we had discussed in the past whether or not the PS Jones should be a Title One school. And what would happen if P.S. Jones was designated a Title I school in terms of the amount of money because it is so large that ultimately it's the same pot of money, you just have to divide it in different ways. So that if P.S. Jones became a Title I school, it would basically dominate our Title I budget, which would pretty much obliterate what's left for the other schools that are Title I. So instead of going that route, we've always just not requested they become Title I. However, we would like to extend money to Tracy so that she can, she, what she would like to do if she had Title I money is essentially pay for a position and pay for some tutoring as well. So that $65,000 would cover a position and some after school tutoring for her. Um, we had included in our original request uh, $25,000 for marketing to either a firm or an individual. We just reduced that to nothing in this, this version. We, we had requested two instructional technology facilitators originally. We reduced that to one instructional technology <coughs> facilitator. We would like to keep the certified teacher at the for the at EdTech in our K-5 mental health classroom. Uh, good news, we had requested a teacher assistant originally, but we do believe we can pay for that out of EC funds. So that's not something that local or state would have to pick up. We had talked about hiring a mental health professional district-wide that would be part of that program. We eliminated that position due to lack of funding. That's not somebody. That's some, that was something we thought we would like to have. We still would, but we just took it out in this particular request. Fixed costs, the higher retirement rate, hospitalization are set by the state. The 3% salary covers the 2% for um, non-teachers and then covers the variety of the teacher raise, which is the average about 6.8, depending on where you're at on the scale. So if you get to the bottom of the screen, the current local expense budget total would be 15760377 Subtract the dollars out, that leaves us $302,875,000 short. If we were to appropriate fund balance of $302,875, then we would break even. This year you appropriated uh, $350,000 in fund balance to use to get us through this fiscal year. So that would be $40,000 less approximately of fund balance for next year. I thought we didn't have it. What do we have? 
that's how it's looking. Currently, as the last audit was about 1.69. Yeah, mm -hmm. There's 350 budgeted right now. Uh, withstanding them having some overruns that weren't picked up in capital that we've been paying out of local, that may go a little bit more than the, the 350 that's currently budgeted. So if you're looking at 350 this year, if we use all of it that's budgeted, 302 in this budget, so it's what, 652. So we're close to a million, a little over a million dollars that would be available at the end of June of 19. Uh, Dr. Phipps, you and, and Michael have been working on that mental health piece. Where are we on that? I hate to, I hate to think that we've taken that out. I mean, that, that, this was one that we were talking about paying out of our funds. We're still we're talking still about working on that Golden Leaf and KB Reynolds and, and anybody else that could be a funder that we can work on. Um, I want to continue that work with both when I'm not here as part of the work that I'm doing in Caldwell uh, that involves mental health. So it's going to be something that we continue to work on. There, is, uh, there was something that was in the Wall Street Journal about three days ago um, uh, about the mental health components that were being put nationwide in the schools, uh, that there will be more grant opportunities coming up and that schools need to jump on them immediately. Uh, and the article was mainly about all the school shootings that if some of these mental health components had been in place, if some of these kids had a place to turn, that some of that can be circumvented, or at least it would red flag students if, if there were people <coughs> at each school. But what I thought was the most interesting was that it did talk about the use of, of school monies and state monies and how it filtered down and when you got down to it that's always the first thing that we take off the table and that schools and I just want us to be proactive on that and not take it off the table and continue to beat that drum we cannot sit here and act like it will never happen in Bedford County we just well, can't it, it has to be reflected in priorities as far as budget goes and the state has talked about doing some things under school safety that goes beyond they SROs, but it's the mental health comp yeah. component. And there may be some opportunities that would not require us to have to go to an outside funder, although we're willing to do that. There may be some opportunities through the General Assembly that will come around, but we're still hopeful. In fact, the SRO dollar, the two for one dollar that we've uh, matched that we've had for a while, they didn't award those this year because they're waiting to find out what the General Assembly is going right. to do. Not that they haven't awarded them, they're just de delaying that. So I'm hopeful that there'll be a bigger component to this. Mark and I are going to a meeting uh, at the end of the month that's supposed to give us an update. So hopefully we'll have some more information. Well, let's please continue to ask for that. My fear for, for us is that you cannot continue to allocate $300,000 of fund balance over and over okay. and over mm -hmm. and over. Mm -hmm. And we got lucky one year and, and it's just because of the, the way that the insurance policy premiums were paid that we ended up with a little bit extra money. But uh, if we go down this road at, at, road at this rate, we're going to have two years of survival and then you don't have it anymore. Then you're going to have to look at a budget like this and de determine where you're going to make $300,000 worth of cuts. And I just, I want to warn you to, to just tap the brakes and be aware of, of what we're looking at here. Good point. Good point. But how many more positions can we keep cutting? Be right. I mean, it's just... I don't think you can lose. cut, but you can cut to the point where you're not effective anymore either, right. and that's that's I know. that's harmful. Do you feel like well, we're not the, we're not even moving forward? And no. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I mean, no, I know I'm the short timer here, no. but we're not moving forward. We're not even staying even. I mean, this budget right here, we're actually taking a step back. Yeah, because we're taking. And now, I mean, it's unfortunate. I mean, we're limited by the funds that we're dictated to, right? Oh. Um, we got to do the best we can with the funds that were allotted, but I mean, somebody's got to wake up. I mean, we've got a responsibility to our children in this county, and it just doesn't seem like they're giving us the ammunition to be able to do it. I mean, to be quite honest, I'm a little disappointed. Not in us, not necessarily, but it becomes harder as, harder as a whole to meet their needs, and their needs are becoming greater and greater. They right. really are. We're well, not seeing them. You know, the, the thing that I think gets lost when we do every every year annually, we look at this budget. If you look at the bottom area under fixed costs, 
those are things we have no control over. No. Right. And that comes up to four hundred and two thousand yeah. right. dollars that could be used in a in a, a variety of ways. But but people just I don't I don't understand that we we seem to lose the fact that we aren't going we're not even staying where we were because these costs are setting us back. Even though it looks like from a budget perspective it's the same amount of money we're having to spend more right. for it, it's just the math. Is, is hard to well, swallow. Then, then what are we going to do cost. with the brick and mortar issues at uh, like right. in, at exactly. Washington High School? That can't last much longer. No. I mean these these outside no, uh, buildings can. that we've that we've. I guess they only have so buildings. many orange cones they can put in corners mm -hmm. and say, "Don't step there, you'll go through the floor." Right. I mean, really, how much longer do you do that at, at a high school? That I know. Is, well, is what we keep doing is taking the things that we can't do in the one year with the money that they give us and put it in the three to five year. And that three to five year, it, I mean, you know, it, that's more like a 15 to 20 year at the right at the money we're getting. We're I mean, we can't. Get just worse. getting worse I mean, and worse. And when you get to do it, I mean, you know, we're talking about doing work at Northside. I mean, that school, that school's 30 years old. It's not a new school. Um, well, that's you know, what I'm saying. We're doing something at Northeast, and I look at how much older Northside is. I, if I could, and I know that mechanically we can't, I would flip it. <coughs> We'd be doing the revamping for fifty thousand at Northeast, and and replacing the chillers at Northside because mm -hmm. that's an older school. But mechanically, we're wiser to do it the opposite way. But let me ask a question. And I'm the guy that for the last several years has been pounding on Title One monies for other schools. But with what we have to work with, as, as you say, we work in what we have to work. Do we seriously need 65000 put into that program at P.S. Jones more than we need a mental health professional in our schools? I would think not. I mean, I don't want to cut anything, but we've been talking mental health piece for right. year after year after year, and it's only getting worse in the school That's all the right. time. We cannot keep right. taking We, we can't keep people. taking that off the table. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're losing, you know, teaching spots. We already have high schools complaining, uh, or school, or parents, not the schools. Parents complaining about what offerings we don't have at the schools anymore, and their ch children are leaving. They're taking them out and sending them to places like Parrot Academy. I'm mean, just using. I'm not against Parrot Academy. It's just the one I thought of. I mean, or sending them to other places, which makes the system even worse because then our ADM goes down, so the money goes down, right, Don? Yeah. So it, it just compounds itself. But sooner or later, we've got to do something other than use a Band-Aid and fix something. Mm -hmm. But the mental health piece in our schools is is really needs attention. But, I mean, just just looking at it, saying not too many lines you can look at, really. Yeah, there are. Any okay. other questions? Just, just my thought. But this Concerned. is Thank you, Martin. Not an action for now. We still have some more time to discuss this. To the 27th of June. Okay. So would you like me to bring back another version to discuss on the 27th? Is that what I'm hearing? I think we're that all here good. right now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're saying go ahead. I, yeah, I, yeah, we want to try to figure out a way to keep the middle. I'm only one person. I'm not going to support this version. So the board would like two versions to vote on? Does that sound good? I try would. I'm just saying I would. Okay. I see a lot of nods that yes, I'd like I a different version. I think most of us here are concerned that we've taken yeah. out that mental health okay. component. Try it right. one more time. I will bring back a different version on the 27th. If I've got to dip into uh, uh, our fund balance, I'd much rather dip into it and put the mental health piece yeah. back in. I just would. Right. And, and then work our tails off to try to get some grants or funding in here to put it back. But that, I, I just think you've got we've got to quit taking that off the table, people. And your grants and funders are going to be more receptible to you if, if you are also making an effort on your that's side. That's right. We've got to show that yourself. we're being proactive yeah. and not that right. we'll keep waiting for them to fund it. Mm -hmm. yourself, so. Would you let me bring both back or you want to proceed with the capital and I mean no. bring both of them back. I'll Just bring them back. Okay. okay. Right. Yeah, even if you don't change, change anything on the capital. Yes, yes. sir. Yeah. We would like to make you earn that interim money. <laughs> <laughs> That don't start until July 1st. We haven't started yet. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. That stop you. We but just want to give you a taste of what it's going to be like. It's July well, Mark, we've already got to bring back the capital because we made it. We made it a uh, an it adjustment on the knee out. That's right. right. That's right. Okay, so we'll fix that. It's a non-action item anyway. Okay. That's right. You no, didn't understand, good. but you're auditioning for this position. Yes. So, I'm auditioning for a job you already gave me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just read the fine print. We've the attorney wrote it up. We've been yeah. done to have second thoughts before. I should have had my own lawyer. That's the problem. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay. 
Item number six, discussion action, sixth grade ethnic participation. A lot of interest in the community about how the board will handle this situation. And, and I don't, I haven't really heard folks on one side or the other, people just asking questions about it. But we've talked about it. Joe's been here. Uh, we've gotten feedback from principals. I think you all have talked to some folks. And we need to make a decision because we've got a lot of work we do over the summer for physicals and concussion testing and that type thing. The question is whether or not the board will allow sixth graders to participate in middle school athletics. The state prohibits that for football. This will be for all other sports. I would like to make the motion and then you can entertain the discussion. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the sixth grade participation for the remaining schools. We'd already adopted approving it for Snowden, um, with the exception of football. I'll second that. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Floor is open for discussion. I don't think it's a good idea. Okay. Uh, I, I, I've, I've voiced my opinion before, and I'm going to do it again. Uh, I don't think, I think there's a, a definite um, size difference between sixth and seventh graders and eighth graders. Um, I think it's going to. I think it's going to eventually cost us more money. Uh, one thing I will say, if it does pass, I need. I, I think we need to make sure that we don't see any JV middle school teams. I don't. I don't think we need to be creating additional teams to give kids a chance to play. Well, we're not um, that in this. So. Well, now, you're approving sixth graders to play. You're not, no, but, I mean, but, but you know. we're not adding teams. Um, and I, I think, I'm, I'm afraid that that's where it'll end up leading. And that's, you know, right now we can't, we can't afford to give coaches raises. You know, we can't, I mean, we can't, can't afford a lot, whole lot of anything. And what you're going to end up doing is putting more stress back on our, at, um, our booster clubs to, to fund these programs. And um, I just, I, I don't agree with it. But. I mean, they're going to have the same yeah. amount of kids no matter what. If they have 20, yeah. they're going to keep 20. It just may be 18 and then two sixth graders. So I don't think that it's going to cost any additional additional money. And I, res I took, you know, which I respect your opinion, but I, I, I've talked to several principals and athletic directors that are all for it. So. Um, and that's my decision is also. Yeah. Uh, that, that's my that. only reason. I'm, I'm not a, a middle school parent. And, okay. So that, that's that's the basis for my motion is they all want And I know there was some talk about a child, if they don't get it uh, as a sixth grader, that that will deter them from going back next year. Uh, I think it's the same thing if they're seventh grade and, and they don't get on the team, that may deter them from going back their eighth grade year to do it. I think that's an individual thing that you're going to see on both sides of it. But I'm, I'm like Carolyn. I mean, I, I, can see both, I can see both sides and a lot of my decisions are based off of uh, who I've talked with. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, well, yeah, I say let them try out, but I have heard what Butch is, I have also heard what Butch is That's what uh, I'm saying. I, I respect that. So, um, if, there are, if there are any schools that try to put in a second, you know, JV type, do they have to come back and still okay. have that approved? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. I mean, they just don't put them in. We, we I mean, I know we approve coaches and stuff, but we approve adding teams, don't we? Or do we oh, yeah. not? Well, you have to fund them, so right. you would, you'd be the power of the purse. Right. Because okay. so looking at our budget, I don't think we'll be able we to. don't intend to do that. <laughs> because, I, I mean, I, I think that's a possibility. I, I well, we got leadership right. next week, and I can yeah. make that, that very make clear. Sure that's what the intent is. Make sure they know we're not going to fund them. Right. Okay. As long as they kind of yeah, heard that. direction you get. Any other discussion? we got a motion and a second on the, on the floor. Seeing none, all in favor of this motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? No. Okay. At least make sure that's noted, okay? All right. Moving on. Item 6.2, budget amendments. Mr. Willie Matt Carey. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, budget amendment uh, 61218 before you tonight. Uh, this budget resolution reflects uh, the current allotments as of uh, the state allotment uh, 47. It shows the different programs that had increases and decreases throughout the year. Um, you have some transfers within the local budget uh, to cover operational costs. Uh, your fund three, again, shows the allotments within the federal programs. Your capital, um, the basically <coughs> the shifts that we did to accommodate shortages within the different projects that you all have been uh, approving for stand to work on this year as well as the standard financing of the school bus leases that are in this fund. <coughs> uh, Child Nutrition receives a, a equipment grant this year. 
Uh, fund six reflects the revenues and expenditures uh, budgeted from those revenues for the various school funds. Fund seven reflects the activity in the three after school programs. Uh, we have been given word that uh, one school will not run their program next year. We have talked with the auditors. Those funds can be transferred to their individual school funds and they can be tracked separately for budgeting purposes, but there are no restrictions on those monies once they go to fund six. And then fund eight is the various activities within the local grants and remaining grant balances that we have uh, as of <coughs> last year. So that will bring your budget into the current uh, date. Okay. What is the state textbook account? What, I mean, how does that work out? The reason that one is in the negative, the state textbook fund basically is um, the warehouse fund. And each year, mm -hmm. school systems are given allotments mm -hmm. for textbooks. They can transfer out. This is the last year that we can do it. Take that you can transfer money. monies from uh, PRC 130 up to, one, um, to PRC 61, which is instructional supplies and materials. So they can buy additional uh, instructional classroom materials that, that were not available through the warehouse. Um, the warehouse has a, a fund balance to it. So even though technically you don't carry over money within your state programs, you do within the textbook fund. So even though it's showing there's a negative, basically we're using some of the monies that we have accumulated in prior years. Okay, but but what I'm saying is it was 252,000. Was that us transferring out or is that a state transfer out? This is state. individual schools using their textbook money to transfer money out. If you recall when we talked earlier, uh, in the year there was right many schools have a large balance in their textbook accounts the state is limiting there again that they won't be able to transfer those monies out for instructional supplies next year so they're it's making the best of it uh, we've had a lot of schools that buy um, Chromebooks for their, their classrooms and the carts because they are digital instructional materials um, so that's been a bulk of the moves that we've had this year Got a question. Just looking at the overall am amended budget so here. The right hand column, is that what is the balance in each one of those accounts at this that, time? That will be the revised budget amount. That, that will not be the current balance after the expenditure. All right, how do you how do you know what is the current balance? What in a general ledger report I can run for you. This is just the budget amendments that are coming for you to cover the expenditure. Could we get one of those on the 27th? Yes, sir. The ledger account very similar to coincide with what this is because yes, some of these numbers look a little bit, I don't mean not blank you, it just looks. They're hard for me to understand. Right. To put in perspective. If we could have something to put right beside this page here, what did it, or if you can put it on. Keep in mind that one. Fund one, June 30th, those balances will be maxed to, to, and I won't have true figures because we still have June's payroll to post, right. and then we have the approvals for the month of July or okay. June for the teachers to post as well. All right. Well, how about if we just wait after you get everything pretty well closed out? Could you come back with this? I can. I can. I can give you one as best I can for the 20th or 27th, mm -hmm. and then I can give you one at year end close with the auditors, which you basically are summarized within your audit. And well, just wait for the auditor first to come back. Okay. All right. Usually I understand the money pretty good, but you got me on this. I'm going to ask you one more question about that, and then I'm going to ask you again. Okay. We had 252000 and I understand what you're saying. And I've received calls about that particular fund. That's what I'm trying to get in my mind exactly what went on. How, how did we allow them to take around 358000 That's all I'm saying. Because I've had that question asked to me, and I couldn't answer it, and I'm, I'm still can't. Okay. In the account this year, mm -hmm. we got an allotment of $252,000. Okay. Are you saying we that had a carryover? Are you saying it's carryover? Yes. The carryover. We have $500,000 in that account from carryover. I didn't book it in here. Uh, I was a little apprehensive about booking last year because state month doesn't really have a fund balance. Okay. But if you'd like to see it, I, I think no, I ended no, up. I mean, no, I was just trying to get an answer. 
So that's why when you see that they transcribed more than they got, they basically, those schools that had gotten their allotment in previous years, um, one school, I think I got $130,000 that they accumulated in prior years that they were transferring back this year. Most of the schools had $10,000 to $30,000 that they brought. I know it makes sense to you, but in a short period of time, I'm looking at all these numbers and I, I just can't put it in perspective. Because it, when you do a, a, a snapshot of it, it looks like we spent money we didn't have. But I know mm -hmm. that's fiscally impossible. That that's kind of why, why I'm asking. I want a true figure, actually right. down the road, but not. I know you got close that right. right. And yeah. there again, that was we, we even though we may spend out to maximize dollars. We're looking at the bottom line on that PRC. We may can do both of the amendments to shift the cover to okay. zero out that after the fact. Okay. Uh, I think I understand what you're saying. Okay. Now, it is an action item, folks. So, uh, okay. does anybody else have any questions for Mr. Carroll at this time? Honestly, Mr. Chairman, I don't know how to ask them, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to put it down and let you see the details. No, I, I'm so trusty doing this, right? Oh, so, I, no, yeah, I appreciate it. Yes, trust me. I want you to understand what I'm, I'm doing because I want you to feel comfortable with <laughs> the numbers. I'm just being honest. I mean, y'all understand all of this. Well, does anybody feel comfortable enough to make a motion? <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion. Okay. I'll second. second. I've got a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Any more questions? Yes, Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. It's all in your hands, okay? All right. Don't we just destroy with it. That's right. Yeah. Item 643, custodial contract. That's Is that your name down here, sir? That's what it says. I don't write them, I just read them. That's all. I think I need to give the board an update yeah. first before Mr. Right. Hudson starts. I think that's why he was pausing. Oh, okay. At last month's board meeting, the board authorized and directed me to try to negotiate a contract extension with Safel, a one-year contract extension. Um, the current contract ends August 31st. In your board materials, you'll see an email from Safel where they are requesting a 10% increase in the current contract price for a one-year extension. The current contract price is eleven thousand four hundred and ninety six ninety cents per month for a total of one thirty six eight ten eight for a year. If you grant them a ten percent increase for the contract extension, it will be twelve thousand five hundred forty dollars and ninety nine cents per month for a yearly price of one hundred fifty thousand four ninety one eighty eight. So that's my update, and then I believe Mr. Hudson has some information to share. Okay. With, with their increase they're asking, that puts us back at basically what we were paid before under the previous contract. Um, so it's my recommendation that we put out for a new authority based on their 10% increase they're asking for and also been communi communicating with our custodial staff and they have suggestions of better products that they would like to have. And I know if we add these products to Savelle, they want an additional increase. So. My suggestion would be is that we write the RP and specify the items that our custodial staff say they would like to have and give everybody a chance to be back on it. So they will have, have the same opportunity and I have three other companies that's interested that's been talking brain and in the supply and another company, I can't remember the name of, but we do have a lot of locals that are, are right. Eastern North Carolina. Thank you. All right. Yes, sir. I move that we do not accept this and we ought to get back out and whoever wants it in the deal. With the when, when does this contract yes, add in what you August August. 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 Okay, so we've got time. Yeah, yeah. time to do it. We'll have it out next week. I'll second it. Yeah, okay. I think we already got a second, but I appreciate it. I'll do it on the third. All right. All right. All right. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of this motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Carry on. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Ms. Okay, now I have to ask for a motion to go into closed session. I move that we go into closed session pursuant to General Statute 143-318.11 one to prevent, to prevent disclosure of confidential personnel files from the General Statute 115-321 and in order to preserve an attorney crime privilege between the attorney and the board, which privilege is hereby acknowledged. 
Okay. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Okay. Motion, second. We're good in closed session. All in favor, just motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passed. We're back in open session. At this time, I will entertain a motion to accept the personnel agenda that was presented to us. Mr. Chairman. Sorry, a motion and a second. Any discussions? Yeah. I'm not, but I like to pull number B under three. You will not be voting. I will not be voting for that. Voting right. that. On uh, item B under transfers. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Have that noted, Lisa. Okay. All right. All in favor of this motion, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Item nine, updates. First is the calendar. I know we've meeting on, what, June the 27th? 27th is our budget meeting for final closeout. Should be a brief meeting. Right. Thirty. Right. And then we need to pick a date for the July meeting. I, I expressed if we could avoid July the 17th. Any other date, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it, but I've got to be out of town that night. Mm -hmm. um, what is the feeling of the group? Or when you would like to meet. Are we going to try to just have one meeting in July? Just one meeting. Can we do it maybe not on a Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Do the 19th, whatever, however you want to, whatever you want to. The later we go, the hiring wise, the more the new hires will have to approve. Okay, how about the 25th, a Wednesday? Is okay. a Wednesday bad for people? Not for me. I'm fine. better for no, me. That's fine. If can we do it on Wednesday? Uh, <clears throat> conflict. Or the 19th, or the 18th, whichever. Either one, I'm fine. Which one works better, early, 18th or 25th? I mean, the, the longer we wait, like I said, the more new hires we'll have. So the 20, I mean, if 25th, 25th works, that would be preferable in the sense you'll have more people to hire. 25th because the nurse okay. would be on the 18th. Okay, so. okay let's do that. Let's do the 25th. Okay. All right, okay, 25th. so we will meet July 25th. 5.30? And you can contact this. 5.30, you know please. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dunn will be uh, off his audition and he'll be in the seat. <laughs> he'll be fine. After the night, he may stay <laughs> Okay. All right. Any board member updates? I will not be present on the 27th. I've asked Ms. Lisa to please call me because I'll be up north on, on vacation. All right. So she's going she's gonna to gonna call me. Because it sounds like we've got some things that will come back next. I just like to hear. And can't go on vacation. Okay. With us. All right. I, I have a real quick update, and I said this in my trips the other day. Um, I know from time to time we all look at young people and shake our head, wondering what in the world they're thinking and doing. But after going to the graduations on Saturday and hearing the invocations and the benedictions and the valedictory and salutatory and. and class president speeches, I think we're going to be just fine. There's some fantastic young people in our county, and I wish them all the good success coming up. And I'd just like to apologize first for not being at graduation on Saturday, but I was up in the air um, <laughs> on an airplane coming back from California, but I heard good reports from... You can see them all on video. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And I'd like to thank Ms. Blue for pitch hitting for me over at Washington High School <laughs> that morning and everything. And um, if nobody else have any other board member updates, I would like to just remind everybody this coming Thursday of the reception for Dr. Phipps. Uh, staff, faculty, whoever is open to the public from 5 to 7 down at the estuarium. Um, there will be a floating reception, so anyone can come by and pat Dr. Phipps on the back or say anything you want to say, Dr. Phipps. <laughs> Get your parting shots in while you got it. But uh, no, he will be here for the budget meeting on the 27th. and. Um, like I said before, it's Caldwell's game, Bover County's loss, and we we do appreciate everything. And um, with did that, we not, did we not tell him we're all going up to stay with him for the Appalachian State? <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> we're back. <laughs> if if nobody else has anything from the board member side, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Phipps. I think he's got a few things. I, I want to congratulate our graduates, as, as Carolyn mentioned. We had a very busy day on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. It was well worth it. It just makes you feel good to see the culmination of their work and, and where they're headed. 
Uh, but also as we close out of school year, I think we have to say thanks to our faculty and staff members who work so hard mm -hmm. throughout the school year to make things successful and, and we're grateful. And if I could take a couple more minutes, I, I've got some stuff I want to read to make sure that I, that I say this correctly. I want to thank the uh, Board of Education for the opportunity provided to me to be here to, to be a leader. The folks that are sitting on the board now, uh, of the folks that are here, Mac Hodges, ECP, Eltha Booth, and Barbara Boyd Williams were here back in, in December 2009 when I had the opportunity to interview. But Robert Belcher, William Warren, Cindy Winstead, Teresa Banks, Mike Isbell were the folks that were on that original board. And to, to, to take a chance on an individual uh, who was unproven, uh, to allow me to come in and, and, and have an opportunity to lead and, and work in the school system is just so much appreciated that there's no way to put into words how I feel about that. So with, with Terry Williams coming on board and Carolyn Walker and Butch Oliver and Michael Bilbro and Terry Draper, it's just been, it, it's a different iteration of a board, but it's, it's always unique and we've handled those challenges. I want to say Lisa Duke has been an awesome work partner and a person to get the job done. Whatever the job is, she does a great job. And Mark Doan and Andrea Lilly and, and Greg Singleton, Stan Hudson, Willie Mack Carowin, the folks that have served with me on the cabinet level, their input and candidness is very appreciated. And I feel like it's helped us uh, move along. And there are many, many other BCS employees with whom I've worked closely. And I want to thank all of them, but I, I'm afraid to start mentioning names because I'm, I'm afraid I'll miss somebody by accident. But for our Beaufort County School students, for our employees, school volunteers, county and municipal leaders, department and agency heads, elected officials and members of the community, which really is everybody, I think, when you look at that list. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for allowing me to serve, and thank you for serving along with me in the roles that we've, that we've played. The community and the Beaufort County School Systems has made an impression on me and my family. I've got three of my children who've got diplomas from the Beaufort County Schools, and I'm proud of that. I'm proud to have been associated with the school system in, in this part of the state. My eight and a half years here have provided me with learning experiences, and I hope that over that time period that I've grown personally and professionally to be a better person, and, and I feel like I can carry those experiences with me. In this job, I learned quickly uh, that you will rarely, if ever, make a decision that everybody agrees with and that most everyone has a strong opinion about education-related topics. However, when decisions are made for the benefit of our students and improving their educational experiences, it's, it's been well worth it. And I want to say, while I'm leaving the county to assume a role in Caldwell County, I'll always have an interest in your work and the success here, and I'll always feel like I've got a piece here in, in Beaufort County. Together, I feel like we've done great work, but there's still great work to be done. With the leadership of the board and the talent and commitment of team members of the school system, I have no doubt that great things lie ahead. Again, thank you for allowing me to serve you and for welcoming me and my family into the community. And I wish you nothing but good luck and great success in what lies ahead. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Does anyone else have anything they need to say? I think we've said a lot tonight. I move we adjourn. We've got a motion, got a second. We've got a fourth. All right. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Stand up. Okay. Good night.